Congress votes to send more money to Ukraine. Trump continues to lead in another round of polling. Plus, Joe Biden moves to end traditional women's sports. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Ukraine, our border, and the contempt Congress has for the American people. But first, I'd like to say that it's great to be back. I was hit with a perfect storm of foot surgery, classwork, and county elections that hit like a tidal wave. I still have a couple months left for school. My foot is healing up pretty well, and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm so excited to be doing the 13-minute news hour again. So let's get started. As you know, the House of Representatives stuck it to the American people once again by voting for another foreign aid package that includes some $60 billion for Ukraine. It's completely outrageous, and it shows that the swamp is real. Additional funding for Ukraine is something the American people do not want. Poll after poll after poll shows that. And just to be clear, I usually don't bring up polling to support or oppose a particular policy position. Too many times the media spins a topic then polls people based on the propaganda, then out pops news stories talking about those polls and how legislators should vote. This is completely different because this Ukraine war is something that's been going on for several years now, and the American people have withstood the barrage of propaganda from the media and Washington, and they're still against it. Americans want Washington to secure our border, not Ukraine's. It's as simple as that, but it's becoming more and more clear that our representative form of government is on the brink. Our legislators are not representing our interests like they're supposed to. They are representing government interests, the swamp, the deep state, and that should anger everyone. Just take a look at this clip from Democrat Rep. Gerald Connolly during debate on the foreign aid vote. Some say, well, we have to deal with our border first. The Ukrainian-Russian border is our border. It's the border between depraved autocracy and freedom-loving people seeking our democratic way of life. What's that? It's just so arrogant. These people expect us to support how they want to vote, and it should be the other way around. They are supposed to vote the way we want them to vote. Well, I have news for this guy. The Ukrainian border is not our border. Our border is being overrun by people who don't even want to be Americans. But hey, they will certainly protest for taxpayer benefits. Our border is in disarray, disarray by design. And when we, the American people, tell Washington to do something, tell our leaders that it is our most important issue, what do they do? They vote against the American border security and vote for $60 billion for Ukraine. On this vote, the A's are 311 and the nays are 112. The bill is passed. Oh, one voting present. I missed it, but thank you. Okay. The House will be in order. It's like we're in some alternate universe. We fund other countries' border protection, but leave ours open for drugs and gangs and sex trafficking and terrorists and people who have no interest in adopting the American culture and becoming Americans. We have people in our own country shouting death to America. But hey, it's all good. Let's send another $60 billion to Ukraine. We need to completely clean house. And as much as I support former President Trump, and I hope he wins again, it's going to take more than one person. We need people who will fight for an American agenda, not against it. And right now, we are sorely lacking in those people. All right, next day, let's take a look at how former President Trump is doing. Because as I said, we certainly need him. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, Hit that subscribe button. Make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, while President Trump is busy dealing with Democrat legal assaults, Biden is shuffling through campaign stop after campaign stop. So if you want an example of election interference, you have it right there. Through bogus lawsuits, the Democrats are keeping Trump from campaigning. But fortunately, the more Biden speaks, the worse he does. How bad is Biden's current standing among the American people? Well, a lot can change, especially with the media, big tech, and the swamp on Biden's side. 
but the American people have had enough of Joe Biden. These are other recent presidents at this point in their re-election campaigns. Where were their approval ratings? Again, you see Biden's 42 percent. One thing that jumps out, they were all higher than Joe Biden. The other thing, the two presidents on this list who did not win re-election, of course, Donald Trump four years ago, he was at 46 percent. And back in 1992, George H.W. Bush, he was at 43 percent. Biden below both of those. Not just bad, but historically bad. If the election were held right now, there's no doubt that Trump would win. Not only does Trump lead on overall approval, but on the issues, Trump clearly dominates. Look at these numbers. Trump advantages on all of these uh, traits. And I stop here because competent and effective. That was President Biden's, the crux of his campaign pitch back in 2020. And we actually polled this question in 2020, and it was basically the exact opposite. It was Biden with about a 10-point advantage over Trump. And again, same with handling a crisis. Biden had the edge over Trump. Those are just some of the issues pointed out in the NBC News poll. A couple of others of note. When it comes to necessary mental and physical health, Trump leads Biden 45% to 26%. Regarding one of the leading issues in this election cycle, inflation and cost of living, it's not even close. Trump crushes Biden 52% to 30%. You have to wonder who those 30% are who think Biden is doing a good job on the economy. And over at CNN, when looking at the battleground states, the CNN hosts were stunned by the results of their own poll when it came to likability. This is viewed favorably across Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. In the 2020 exit polls, what do we see? 50% of voters view Joe Biden on average favorably in those states, compared to just 45% for Donald Trump. Look at the Joe Biden trend line where he is now. Joe Biden is far less like than he was four years ago. Just 43% of voters now view Joe Biden favorably in these states. And Donald Trump, despite everything that has happened, everything that has happened, is actually slightly more liked. 47% favorable rating. So this isn't just a lesser of two evils that's going on. The fact is that Donald Trump is, in fact, better liked than he was four years ago and is better liked than Joe Biden is right now in these battleground states. It's pretty gosh darn clear. Well, look at that. Pretty gosh darn clear. But keep in mind that the whole word likability doesn't really tell the story. The fact is that we have two presidents running against each other with two records as president. So when talking about likability, it's going to be hard for someone to separate their personal feelings for a person from the fact that they sure did like a stronger economy. They sure did like a more secure border. and They sure did like a more peaceful, stable world. Likeability encompasses general acknowledgement that America was simply better under Trump. All right, next let's talk about the latest move by Joe Biden and the left to destroy not only women's sports, but the whole identity of women in general. Through his education secretary, Miguel Cardona, Biden altered language in the Title IX policy to effectively wipe out the entire meaning of Title IX. Now, this policy was enacted decades ago to ensure equality in women's sports and other activities in schools. But because of the push by the radical left, Biden has now replaced biological sex in determining funding between men's sports and women's sports with gender identity. This change has far-reaching effects because now it opens up women to having to compete against men, having men in their locker rooms, restrooms, dorms, and more. The policy designed to protect and recognize the value of women is being destroyed to protect and elevate men. Here's what Miguel Cardona had the audacity to say. These final regulations build on the legacy of Title IX by clarifying that all our nation's students can access schools that are safe, welcoming, and respect their rights. How outrageous. Title IX was created to advance women. Now it's a set of regulations for all the nation's students? How does that even make sense? Here's some comments by Riley Gaines, former NCAA All-American swimmer and advocate for protecting women's sports. Uh, This is the most asinine, really, I would say the the most anti-woman, anti-reality pursuit we have seen from this administration thus far. Um, It is something that not only abolishes women's sports as we know it, and this would compel our speech. Uh, Students and faculty would be forced, required, to use preferred pronouns. And if we don't, or if you, a 17-year-old girl who's randomly housed with a male in your dorm room, if this is something you go to your administration and, and express your discomfort with, Under these new Title IX, this new proposal, this new rewrite, you would be guilty and charged with sexual harassment. 
At a time when Americans are craving sanity and common sense, the Democrats and Joe Biden are pushing to pay off student loans that students should be paying off themselves. They are pushing a green agenda no one wants, and they are looking to erase women in the name of advancing a fringe agenda. Where are the so-called women's groups? Why aren't we hearing anything from them? The reason is because whether it's BLM or National Organization for Women or whatever else, these groups don't care about their named cause. It's all about promoting a Marxist set of policies designed to rip apart the American culture and the West in general. Here's more from Gaines. Uh, so, of course, this is an issue that 90, I would say 95 percent of common sense everyday Americans, of course, parents, coaches, medical professionals, female athletes themselves, they see this happening uh, and, and this certainly turns them away. This really isn't a battle of red versus blue. Uh, really, what this is, is, is sane versus insane, really moral versus evil. Good for Riley Gaines. And hopefully the American people will stand with her and vote for sanity in November. And next, here are some rapid fire headlines from around the country. First, as predictably as the sun rising in the morning, fast food prices are skyrocketing in California following the state's new $20 minimum wage law. As reported by the Gateway Pundit, the law, as we all knew it would, has resulted in restaurant chains raising their prices to compensate for paying higher wages. Wages not driven by market forces, but by the government. According to the Gateway Pundit, quote, Wendy's raised its menu prices by around 8%, while Chipotle Mexican Grill hiked its prices by approximately 7.5%. Starbucks, the Seattle-based coffee chain, raised prices of its menu items at its California locations by around 7%. I wonder what these workers will think when they see their hours cut or find themselves completely out of a job. In Baltimore, Mayor Brandon Scott says he's going to take COVID funds. Yes, there's still COVID funds out there being spent when everyone is so over COVID. And he's going to use them to fund local arts groups. But here's the thing. If you're white, you're out of luck. And yet another sign of blatant discrimination from the left. The Post Millennial reports that Scott will use COVID funds for a, quote, diversity in arts program designed to ensure that, quote, all artists and communities have equitable access to resources and opportunities in Baltimore, end quote. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, today's show's one sheet is available to Patreon supporters using the link in the description. The one sheet gives you the links to all the videos and stories used on today's show so you can dive even deeper into each issue. And with that, our next show will be Friday evening at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.